Hey y'all, Coach in a Fight here. Looking at the calendar for the 12th month in the year 2023, and we see we have some interesting events coming up here toward the end of March. Now, of course, we just finished with the feast days of Purim, and we see here a lot of dates related to Genesis chapter 8 and the floods of Noah, which all took place over the course of about a year. Well, that lends to the idea of the purpose of this video, which is a Bible study on whether the temple, our third temple, the fleshly temple, will be constructed in less than a year. So in this video, we're going to be looking at some verses that suggest that, suggest that the third temple, the fleshly temple, will be constructed in less than 364 days. So what I believe we're talking about here is the acceptable year of the Lord as spoken about in the book of Isaiah and referenced by our Messiah in Luke chapter four, verse 19, where it's talking about how he came here to preach the acceptable year of our Lord. This is our Messiah quoting from the book of Isaiah speaking about himself. Well, I believe the year of the Lord that he's talking about actually starts with the spring feast days. I believe this is a pattern for all of our father's people, how in the first month, maybe some in the second month, will enter the ark just like Noah did and will experience some life changing events over the course of the next year that will end with the construction of our personal temple. Now we get a hint of that over in Exodus chapter 40, verse 17, where it's talking about how in the first month and the first day of the first month was the tabernacle reared up. This is the tabernacle that Moses reared up. But notice here that this is the second year that is talking about here. And we learn in the book of Jasher, chapter 82, that it actually took five months for the construction of that first tabernacle. And then in chapter 83, we learn that the tabernacle was completed on the first day of the first month. This would imply that the construction of that temple starts sometime around the eighth month or toward the end of the seventh month with the end of the Feast of Tabernacles being on or about the 23rd day of the seventh month, exactly five months later puts us on the 23rd day of the 12th month, which is eight days before the completion of the tabernacle and the first day of the sanctification process that we see in Jasher chapter 83 and verse 1. We're presently in a study on the sanctification process and what it actually means. What's necessary for consecration or sanctification? Father Willen will cover that more extensively in a future class, but it seems to be all about just setting apart declaring oneself or a certain thing unique or holy unto the Lord. But the purpose of this video is how soon this actually took place. They left Egypt in the first month of the first year. And then in the first month of the second year, they have already constructed the tabernacle. So is that the way our tabernacle is constructed? where we go through the redemption process of Passover for our first time. And then over the course of that year, our temple is constructed. Well, this is what I believe the Messiah was talking about as the acceptable year of the Lord, where over the course of the year, we hit each one of these milestones or feast days, as we call them, each bringing a different element to our spiritual walk. Quickly looking over here at a chart from Clarence Larkin, we can see that Passover is associated with our redemption. Through the Passover communion is when the blood is placed on our doorposts and 
our slate is made clean again. All of our sins are canceled out during Passover. And that's what gives us redemption. And then over the next week, seven days, we have the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is where we learn our holy walk. That is the week that we avoid all other doctrine except that which comes from the scripture. We read the scripture alone for seven days, learning what it is that our Father requires of us as part of this acceptable year of the Lord and seals us into his kingdom. Another study that we're working on is out of Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 8, out of the Septuagint translation. It would be in chapter 31, verse 8 of the other translations, but we pull out the Septuagint translation because in verse 8, it says that we will be gathered from the ends of the earth to the Feast of Passover been looking real close to try to bring these words out because it is unique to the Septuagint. In other words, the Septuagint is the only one that mentions that we will be gathered at Passover. But if that is actually true, that is extremely significant and lines up with what we're learning from this study. And that is all of our journeys, our spiritual journeys, our path back to our father, the way back to the kingdom of heaven all starts with Passover, where we are redeemed, starting this year long process. But then after that, you have the Feast of First Fruits, which is about the resurrection of our Messiah, but it is also about our resurrection when our dry bones are to be raised again. That feast day actually symbolizes the start of that, I believe. Then the next one is Pentecost, which is a twofold feast day. One being about the first fruits offering or when we are to make our contributions back to our father. We do so on all three of the mandatory feast days, Unleavened Bread and Tabernacles as well. But Pentecost is more recognized as such because it's really kind of all about that the first fruits celebration. But anyway, then you have the Feast of Trumpets, which is about the regathering of Israel. So there's a connection between the Feast of Trumpets and Passover. What this symbolizes is the break period between the old era and the era or the time that we live in now. Humanity has had the opportunity to experience these previous events before there's a 2000 year break, putting us where we're at now, which is in the middle of this regathering process. That's the Feast of Trumpets. And then after the regathering, we get atonement, atoning for our faults. We must understand that even though our sins are canceled out, we still have to make up for the wrongs that we're doing or that we've done and that what points to atonement. And then you have the Feast of Tabernacles, which is all about the millennial age or the time when our Messiah or our Father will come and dwell with us in our spiritual tabernacle. And that's what we're talking about today, how this tabernacle that he will dwell in is constructed over the course of one year, starting from the time that we enter the Feast of Passover, hitting the rest of these milestones, being sure not to get ourselves cut off by violating certain commandments of the Bible, keeping ourselves clean. We're able to go through this acceptable year of the Lord and have our temple constructed at the end or at the beginning of that next year. We see similar mentioned over in Second Ezra chapter 2 verse 38, where it talks about us being sealed at the feast of the Lord. So the way it looks is we're sealed during Passover or second Passover if we miss the first. And over the next year, the construction of our fleshly tabernacles commences. And one thing that should also be noted from the book of Jasher is how they were celebrating the Sabbath day already. 
We learned that back in chapter 70, before the Exodus had taken place, Moses and our father had already arranged for the children of Israel to be keeping the Sabbath day. That's really important because of what we were talking about earlier about getting cut off. Many people will go through Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, but then will miss or corrupt the Sabbath day soon after. So that's one of the things that we'll be wanting to do is study the Sabbath day when it falls and what it is that we're supposed to be doing in it as part of the acceptable year of our father, being sure that at the end of which we can have our temples intact. And then like we see over in the book of Barnabas each year, we repurify our temple, being sure that it is an acceptable habitation for our father. Again, it starts with Passover and the redemption or the cancellation of our sins that cleans our temple up in the first place. So what do we do with this information? First of all, realizing that it is highly speculative, but think about it. What's so different between us and those people back there with Moses? Sure, we are ignorant to all things scriptural. Most of us at least, having never read the scripture for instructions on how to live our lives, but they were too back there with Moses. The Bible wasn't even written yet. And when they hit the desert, they were also complaining and scared, just like we are. They were sinful, just like we are. They were trying to go back into the Egyptian way of doing things, just like many of us are all under the leadership of Moses, just like we have the leadership of the spirit of Elijah now. So what makes us so different? If they were allowed to have a tabernacle constructed in less than a year, then why should our tabernacle take longer than that to build? Well, it makes sense to me. You can let me know what you think in the comments section, but I believe that many of us are walking around with our tabernacles intact and don't even know it. Sure, there are those who haven't started the process yet, and they'll want to be very sure to keep first Passover or second Passover this year. But then there are those who started the process last year, and they'll be thinking about the purification or the sanctification of their new tabernacle, as talked about in Jasher chapter 83. And then for those who have been on this walk longer, we should consider what's written in the Shepherd of Hermas. That book called the Shepherd of Hermas describes the different conditions of our tabernacle. Sure, we may have a tabernacle, but is it sanctified? Is it holy? Is it clean on the inside or does it need some work? Well, I would suggest that you go over and listen to or read the book called The Shepherd of Hermes. Maybe even look at this playlist that Stacy and I created, which is a verse by verse study of the entire book of The Shepherd of Hermes. So that we can make sure that our tabernacle is acceptable in the entire temple that we hear about in the book of Revelation. So for those of you who are new and are just now coming around to learning the ways of our father, be particularly interested in Passover, paying close attention to it, doing the best that you can. Of course, it is a learning process. But for those of us who have started that process, we can start to look for signs that our temple is constructed in the second year. Again, after we've kept ourselves clean, not getting ourselves cut off and have met all of the other milestones throughout the year. So with that, I'm going to close this video out and look for your comments down below. So I'll see you there.